Uh, Scotland's First Minister says she plans to hold a referendum on independence come the end of next year. Nicola Sturgeon's admitted the plan poses challenges for the border with England. Uh, there they are. Oh, that's Alex Salmond, isn't it, with Sturgeon, when they were, when they were mates? Uh, in a speech last night, the longest-serving First Minister reiterated her calls for Scotland to hold a second referendum with or without legal authorisation from Westminster. Michael Blackley is the political editor of the Scottish Daily Mail. Uh, Michael, welcome to you. Um, where, where do you stand on this idea uh, of, of Westminster's legal author, authorisation? In other words, if they don't give it, this will only be an advisory referendum. And if you're attached to the union, you'll say, I'm not playing, I'm not going to vote. And therefore, she can claim victory, Sturgeon, but it won't count for anything. Yes, it's an abs absolutely crucial issue as to how a referendum can actually happen. I mean, Nicola Sturgeon has been pretty clear that ideally she wants the referendum to, a referendum to happen exactly like it did the last time, which is the UK government granting consent and a legal referendum going ahead. Um, yesterday, it was quite interesting that she moved on a little bit from that yesterday. She she said that this that a legal referendum will happen whether the UK government gives consent or not, which left a lot of ha head scratching from people that were there because she then refused to really answer any questions whatsoever about what, she's, what she means. I was speaking to a constitutional expert yesterday who was saying, really, if it's to be a legal referendum, the only way that it can possibly be legal without the consent of the UK government is to simply tell people the result won't matter. You'll, you'll vote, but nothing will happen. There will be no effect from that result. Um, obviously, if that vote happened like that, it would be a glorified opinion poll. It would be worthless and you wouldn't have anyone on the pro-union side taking part, I suspect. Michael, that economic study yesterday, she was talking about the UK's uh, reprehensible record on research and development, R&D. Uh, it's a devolved matter for the Scottish Government. What was she talking about? There was, uh, during, in the document that was published yesterday, what it tried to set out was how the UK compares to, it was 10 small independent nations that had been selected and there was a comparison there. Um, there. There was absolutely no mention in the document about Scotland in that. And as you say, a lot of the areas were devolved. So there was certainly no mention of some of the education problems that we've had, some of the problems construction, constructing ferries. So a lot of people reading that document did think, well, wait a minute, if this is all about having the powers the SNP look in a lot of areas like they're mishandling some of the powers that they have at the moment. Michael, do you think the 800,000 Scots who live in the UK but outside of Scotland should be entitled to vote? Um, uh, that's certainly something that's always been suggested. It, it was interesting part of the debate. It was ruled out the last time. Really, it probably is an issue for, for Scots to vote on ultimately. What was quite interesting in 2014 was that you got a lot of positive feeling from the rest of the UK. You got people saying, please don't leave us. Uh, we want you to stay in the UK. And maybe that, that had, an, had an effect. Certainly that was the, the sort of message that David Cameron wanted to lead at the, at the time. A lot of celebrities were coming out thinking that. But probably it ultimately does need to be a vote for Scottish people. But um, if you're to go by opinion polls, Scottish people don't want that vote to, vote to happen in the first place. There's only 29%, according to the most recent opinion poll, 29% of Scots actually want a referendum to take place by the end of next year under Nicola Sturgeon's timetable. So that's possibly the biggest challenge for her at the moment. Michael Blackley of the Scottish Daily Mail. Michael, thanks for your time. Uh, Andrew Pierce alongside me to reflect on this one. Um, I, I, I don't like to play the uh, the Remainer tactic of just here's a reason to be terrified. Here's a reason to be terrified. And um, that border, if it's a hard border, mm. and you've got a, a, a nationalist government in Edinburgh blaming all the ills of its country on England, I don't see harmony ruling in decades to come. Do you? No, but I don't think she's going to. I don't think it's going to arise as an issue, Colin, because a cabinet minister said only yesterday they can have a referendum in 2039. 
because that will be 25 years since the last one, 2014, when Nicola Sturgeon and Alex Salmond, who was then the leader of the SNP, said this is an a once-in-a-lifetime vote. Well, 25 years on is not once in a lifetime, so that's quite a generous uh, provision. And, of course, even if she does hold it, as Michael was saying, if, if so many people, just, well, you were saying, so many people who are unionists don't bother to vote, it will have no democratic credence whatsoever. And, and here's the other thing. If she thinks she can take Scotland into the European Union, uh, she'll have to accept the euro. That's one thing. How's that going to go down in Scotland? That there, there'll be a hard border with the same issues about customs checks, which we've now got between Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland. Do they want all that? Of course they do. Andrew, thanks.